19 year old phenom running really well. No one's like, oh, we got to pick and figure out why a thing Mo doesn't deserve the, the rewards of all the hard work. Nian Saba trains just like everyone else. She has a body that is developed differently from other women, but she's still a woman by the law. So I want to ask you, you asked me this a couple weeks ago. Uh, you, you asked me this a couple weeks ago. Do you think they're going to change the rule? Because now you have someone like Nian Saba in the five, and then you have Boma in the two. I think they're going to try to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think it's bull because well, I, I know that. I know, I know how you feel about it. I'm just wondering. You've, you've made your point very clear on how you feel about it. But I mean, yeah. I'll, I'm asking, what, the... what do you think she's going to do? Well, she'll go to the 10K. She got fifth in the 10. So they'll wait. So they'll keep the 10, but the five will be out. And what will they knock out the two and the 100 will be in? I think so. I think they're just going to keep doing it and just look, have egg yeah. on their faces. It's just like the idea. I just people freaking out over like, like just like if they win or not. It's just still making. I would I would listen to the quote science that actually was proven. Not they had to retract the the study, but I would listen to it if Nian Saba steps on the track and is like looking like a like is running like thirteen forties and be like, all right, sums up. But she's on the track running in the same realm of elite female distance runners. There's nothing different. And people thought Casa Semenya was on a different path. But looking back on it, Casa Semenya was probably worse, if not equal, to what a thing Mo is right now. We just were like, Caster's unbeatable. No, she wasn't. She clearly was beatable. She got third in the 1500 at the Olympics. She was beatable. Like... Yeah, and she was good. In the, yes, yeah, she ran faster in the eight hundred. She ran faster than yeah. than Mo has run in the eight hundred. Yeah, I th- the the tricky part with if you're Nian Saba or you're in Boma right now is just the more successful you are, the more likely you are to be excluded. Yeah, but it's sense. clearly not slowing them down. The whole idea that they're sandbagging that's a that's a retread from the Semenya era, which the take never really made sense because once she was allowed to compete. Right? Why would she still be sandbagging? Like, why wouldn't you? Wouldn't you want to break a world record and get a lot of money? And then there was that time period at the end where her ban was imminent, but it hadn't gone into effect that last season, and she was still running really fast around the same times that she was running before. So it would never made sense to me why you would sandbag if you knew you were going to be removed from the event anyway. Wouldn't you be even more motivated to run faster at that point because they're they're kicking you out of out of the event, um, and you had already lost the case. That that argument's always been been a bit strange, but I, it's one of the big questions in the off season is is what they do with it because you could also see because of the the protestations of of these athletes based on on that news that that broke regarding the study that they used. You could also see them trying to go back to CAS and getting the whole thing reversed. So I think everything is on the table. I think everything from now it's all the events to it's none of the events. Yeah. And I think there was like that people like, oh, like the, again, I understand the side of people who think like it's an unfair advantage. Even if it finished first or last, it's still an unfair advantage. And I think the visual uh, display, not visual, but like when three DSD athletes went one, two, three in the 800 in the Olympics, yeah. people yeah. were like, yeah. Well, Mike, they thought like, oh, it's taking over the event. Like, but I, I don't see like 50 DSD women all lining up to like take over the sport of track and field. Like there's a, there's a DSD woman uh, that was uh, Mboma's training partner. I'm not their training partner. from the same country, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Each, what yeah. was her name? No one, no one cares. Yeah, Masalingi, she's a 21.4 runner. Like, and it's no one, like, if if it was such an incredible advantage, there would be a lot more of like, boom, boom, boom. But we're just, they are just regular athletes who happen to be winning and they're fun to watch. It's fun to watch them go on win streaks. It's fun to see them get beat. It's fun to see them win. 
It's the sport. Well, Call well, me to clarify, when Nian Saba to- starts running 1340, and then I'll be like, you guys have a point. But until then, no. Well, to clarify, like, to clarify, you acknowledge that it would produce an advantage, but you just don't – you don't think that's enough to exclude them, correct? Correct. I don't think the advantage is big enough the way right. an advantage of, like, doping is. 